Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Game Week uh, 4 review video. Kind of a strange time to do it, but we do have games midweek this week. So the review video is going to be released now. And right after I finish shooting this, I'm going to shoot the preview as well to have that released tomorrow morning before games start tomorrow as well. Um, so quick turnaround here. Literally, there's a game on right now. We're not even finished the game week yet. Um, I even have it on right here. If you see me look up for a sec, just seeing what happens here. Uh, Napoli currently up 3-0 on Udinese, which is the last game of the game week. Have three players still in that. So this final or the score that I have may not be a complete accurate, accurate representation of what's happening uh, right now because I still have three players currently in game. And uh, they've had a good start to this game so far. And so without further ado, we will get right into it. We won't be able to do a leaderboards update today because it won't have been updated yet, uh, but we'll just go through how the players did. So as per usual, Zoe in net, um, unfortunately did let in a goal this week. They played Venezia and Venezia scored their first goal at their stadium in like 19 years because I don't think they were using that while they were in City at B as far as I understood. Um, but yes, that goal goes in. Spezia still gets the 2-1 win away from home, but they uh, only the two points for Zoet because they didn't get three uh, saves, but didn't let in two goals. We got the traditional two points for the keeper there, which is fine. Um, defense did pretty well, almost did great. Uh, so Roma did lose 3-2. So Karstok got four points with one of the minus because at least two goals against. But he got an assist, which is good, seeing that these defenders do pick up not just clean sheets. And they're still able to get me points in other ways, which is awesome. Um, and when you put him on a team that generally does get clean or has the potential to get clean sheets, makes him a worthwhile defender to have. Um, Mela's five points come from the fact that they did get a clean sheet. I believe he also picked up a yellow card, though, so that's why he didn't get the six. Uh, Mero Rui's point total just popped up to six, it looks like, because they just crossed over the 60th minute in the game against Udinese. Oh, and Napoli almost scored again. But... Um, so, yeah, they did just pick up that. So right now he holds six points. Um, but if uh, Udinese do score a goal, that point total will drop or go up if he gets an attacking return. Did just see him take a free kick. So that's good to see. Also, all three of my Napoli players uh, playing, like uh, starting, was in question today. Uh, all of them had yellow flags coming to the week. All of them started, which is really good news. I'm really glad I didn't transfer anyone out in a panic. And uh, that's going good. So, so far, Mario Rui having, doing what I had hoped for him to do is get the clean sheet. Kimbiasso was my frustration to the week, not because I expect him to bring in big hauls every game, but um, if we don't know the for a defender to be credited with a clean sheet, they need 60 minutes of play time and obviously have not been scored against. Now, yes, uh, if you look up, uh, Genoa did get scored on twice by Fiorentina. But when Kimbiaso was taken off, it was the 59th minute with the score nil nil. I mean that he was on a clean sheet still and was one minute away from getting credited with the clean sheet. Instead, he gets substituted. If he was literally substituted a minute later, he not only like gets that 60 minute mark, but then he takes home the clean sheet and Genoa would have gotten scored on not too long afterwards. Cause after you get scored on, if you get substituted off goals against don't count against you anymore. So he could have been the only Genoa defender with a clean sheet that week. So even if other people had Genoa defenders, they wouldn't have got the clean sheet, obviously, because they didn't keep it the whole game. So that was the frustrating part. It was a bit of an early substitution for Kim Biasso, and that lost us about five points there because it would have been one for playing 60 minutes and then four plus for the uh, clean sheet. So that was unfortunate and tough pill to swallow. Looking at the rest of the team, overall, it was a it's been a pretty good week so far, hoping that it gets better as this game continues on. Uh, Barella, Mr. Consistent. Uh, I have no issues with him. No huge hauls. This actually wasn't a bad one at all, but no double point hauls. But every week you got first three weeks were assists and a goal this week in a big 6-1 drubbing of uh, Bologna. When you see six goals, you'd like a player like Barella to get more than one return, but your returns are return at the end of the day. Gets me nine points, and he actually it does outscore my captain as vice captain, unfortunately, but that's okay. It wasn't too bad. 
Paslich been kind of disappointing ever since I sat him for his one return in game week one. He hasn't really done anything. Probably a player that I might be looking to uh, transfer on at some point. Uh, Insignia, like I said, currently in game, there was uh, the first goal by Napoli. It was in question whether Insignia got the goal or Oshimhen got the goal. And originally it was given to Insignia, assisted by Mario Rui. So the last three touches uh, for this goal were the three players that I have. Um, and that would have actually been better because it gives Mary Rui a really good chance for bonus whenever they get an attacking return. Also for Insignia, it, uh, that's an extra goal. That's an extra point for a goal for a midfielder compared to an attacker. So I do kind of lose out a point due to the fact that they gave it to Oshimhen and the assist to Insignia. Um, so I guess Oshimhen got in a touch on it that wasn't clear right off the bat. I didn't see the goal in live time. Uh, but that's what I got based on commentary since I've been watching it and uh, how I saw the scores flip on the app. Okay. Um, Dybala, it was, Dybala didn't have a bad game. Of course, Juventus couldn't hold out for a win for a fourth straight week. Uh, they got scored on later in the second half against Milan for the 1-1. Dybala did get the assist on the early Murata goal, um, which normally, I mean, like, hey, an assist, five points, that's not bad. Uh, the issue is I transferred out Joe Pedro for him. Joe Pedro went and got a goal and an assist this week. So I did miss out on a goal this week by making that transfer in. But uh, I do see Dybala still being a good fancy asset going forward, especially if the team can kick it into gear. Uh, obviously, against Milan, even if you're Juventus from past years, you know that's a tough game coming in. So generally, a draw against Milan wouldn't be the worst thing, but it's the fact they haven't got a win yet. That's uh, putting a sour taste in a lot of fans' mouth and people that have own their players for fantasy as well. Then we go up to our strikers. Osim Hen does have a goal currently in this game. As I said, so that's why he's sitting on seven points. And Immobile scored a nice header goal as my captain, so always great when your captain gets a return. Ideally, you want more than that. But a 16-point haul is never something to uh, be upset with. He would have been my highest point getter on the day, aside from Barella, assuming that Insignia and Oshim Hen stick with where they are, um, with what they've got so far. Uh, I picked the right bench this week. I mean, interchangeable between Bonazzoli and, ben and Bandanelli with Cambiasso and Pasolic. Assuming Molina doesn't do anything, I'm glad I sat him um, because he's got zero points due to the fact that I wonder if he has a yellow card. He might have a yellow card. He's got two goals scored on him, but I thought he played 60 minutes. I don't think he's been subbed off yet. Maybe he has. Um, and anyway, so yeah, the bench, it's, I picked the right bench this week, um, which is good, I guess. I'm currently sitting at 62 points in the week. Could go higher. Oshiman actually has a chance right here. No, just missed the post. Okay. Um, so that almost changed there. But it's good to see that all of these Napoli players are getting attacking. I'm telling you guys, jump on Napoli players before the run of good fixtures. Get stale. These players' prices will be going up, I guarantee you. And especially as Oshim Hen was 10, uh, 10 mil at the start of the season, he's gone down to 9.7. I don't think he's climbed up yet, but I guarantee he will be. He scored two goals uh, during Champions League. And he's got another one today, and who knows who might go on. He's looking threatening to score another one this game as well. Um, other than that, I'm going to start shooting the next video that will be released tomorrow morning. So two quick uploads back to back. Um, please take a look at them. Like and subscribe to them. I am still at 47 subscribers, so let's try to get us up to 50 uh, within the week and keep growing from there. Uh, drop a comment as to how your team did. I'd love to know how you guys are doing, what your plans are going forward. And um, if you uh, share these three Napoli players with me that I'm having some fun with watching right now as this game goes on. All right. Take care. Have a good week. And I'll talk to you again tomorrow.